Hello everybody, welcome to the Floof stream. OMG Floofy here. So, as you guys are seeing, there's a lot of stuff going on in chat with me and the mods right now. Um, before I even get started, I'm going to straight up say that no spoilers whatsoever, even in what I've said, in uh, even what I've seen in the game is permitted. We have people in chat that have not seen anything of the game and are behind me. So, I don't want them to be spoiled on events that are coming up. So no spoilers whatsoever. Mods are on high alert and they will actually purge you for it. Even, I mean, slightest things. Like I said, we don't want to have anyone like... We just saw someone in chat almost get spoiled, so let, let's let, let's not do that, please. I mean, we want everybody to enjoy this game and its twists at the finest, right? So, we are going to be doing an unboxing of the Eternal Box, which is the version that has the books in it. Uh, Sniff will cut your throat. Yes, yes he will. I think he's prepped for that. Sniff, do you have a knife on hand? Are you ready? He just shouted, his hand is his knife. So, he is quite ready for this. So, uh, also as a heads up, we're going to have a... Um... Yep, there you go. Thank you, Cyrus. TLDR, TLDR, there are people on the stream who are here for the unboxing and do not know about the events of Sin 4, so no spoilers. So, before we get started, I see Doc, I see Richie, I see Mr. J, of course, Sniff. I saw fan here, Archie, Cypher, Firehawk, uh, Mr. J, Turn, hi Turn, uh, Gashismo, I also, earlier today, Scrim put in a subscription to get those amazing popcorn emotes, thank you guys, thank you, thank you, thank you, um, also before I get really started into things, check out events, uh, the events page, you will see the list of the events that are happening this week on my stream. I am having kind of an erratic schedule, but this means I can get some streams in for the for you European folks as well as the North American folks. Um, so there's also going to be a random creative stream as I work on my planner this week because I don't normally get to do that. So yay! Oh, let's see here. So you want to check that out or check out my Twitter at OMG Floofy. So we're going to go ahead and switch over to my overlay for the unboxing. Woo! Also, I moved my webcam, as you can see. It's it's now in position where you can see where my keyboard normally sits. But, um... And I see this is kind of weirded out. Let's fix that. Alright. Um, don't do it again, Richie, okay? I understand on the apology, just don't do it again. Um... Alright, so... Oh, come on. There we go. All right, I had to do a little adjustment there. I need a new keyboard mat. It's got a lot of dust on it and stuff. So. This monster. Oh, God. This. It's looking about as great as my nerves. It's you. You can't really see much of this. Let me see if I can adjust a bit more so you can see the box itself. Ta-da! So. I have a lot of dust in my room. Uh, because the PC is like right here. It's like right off camera. My mixer and my PC, and they attract a lot of dust, unfortunately. So we're going to bring the, yeah, Phoenix Wright shirt. It's a, it's a parody of Street Fighter. Did the box deserve that hard of a slap? <laughs> so I've already pulled off my, uh, my address for good reason. And let me, let me turn down Spotify. There we go. That's probably a lot better. And turn up my mic because I'm a little further away. Uh, let's see here. I'm already on it, Doc. I'm seeing my, I'm seeing everything there. Uh, so when it gets time for the stream, uh, I will have to go into standby because I've got to rearrange everything. Cause this right here, this is the webcam that normally sits on top of my monitor. But, uh, so I haven't even opened Falcom's box yet, so I don't even know what to get out of this. <laughs> yeah, you already do have my address, Hawk. Don't mind the, the mess that is my office back behind me.
All right, partially done. I'll look at chat here in a second, sorry. Spotify's in the way, there we go. Cannot grammar. I am so terrible with scissors. All right. Ooh, ta da! All right, so there's some padding there. And here's the box itself. And of course, extras from Falcom. So we'll go through these as we. Oh my god, this box is heavy. All right. Can you have the bubble wrap? <laughs> It's probably cheaper for you to buy bubble wrap than it is for me to mail it to you. All right. Yeah, we're not allowed to call that box heavy after Oblivion. By the way, if you guys... For those of you, if any of you follow Sentinels of the Multiverse, the Oblivion box was insane. All right. So, looks like I got... Three issues of Falcon Magazine, which is cool. I hate bubble <laughs> God. Alright, so we're gonna put these back here. I've got a stack of other magazines over there. This is the book cover. Right here, the fancy... If I put the sunlight in here, you can actually see how metallic it is a little better. So, this is actually really slick looking. So, this is for the books themselves. I know. This is what I wanted. I think it was supposed to be a metal, actual metal slipcase. But it... <laughs> I burst bubbles. Oh, it's, I'm not getting to them. Should I turn off Spotify and turn this into an ASMR stream or something with bubble wrap? <laughs> Alright, putting this over here. And there it is. The Eternal Edition, as it's labeled. <laughs> Alright, so there you go. Uh, let me see if I can find something for scale. Here's my PS4 controller. Ta -da. A popful male. Oh my god. Drac. Er, Drac. Why did I call you Drac? Hawk, please. A banana for scale. I don't have any bananas. I'm sorry. If I did, it wouldn't it would not be a problem anymore. <laughs> Alright. Oh wow, this is cool. Okay. Oh crap, there's boxes. <laughs> Alright, so there's there's the OV. It's a wrap around instead of just your typical OV, a full wrap on it. I'll probably put it somewhere because it's nice. Alright. So there you go. If you had a banana, you would no longer have a banana, that's true. Ooh. That's cool. Oh, hey, before we do this, let me look at the back of the box. That's super slick looking. And even the sides on the inside are decorated, as you can see. Let's put this right here. I'm going to move my mouse a bit so you can see the sides on the inside of the box are all decorated, too. That is actually a really cool set. This is probably my code. Yep, that's one code. Let me put this away so I don't give the code up on stream. Holy shit.
This is a letter from Altina about Milliam. And it's also two pages. I should go through and actually... I should go through and actually, like, scan these, because this is so sweet. This, this letter is... And inside of it, inserted in it, I'm going to try to cover this. Inserted in it is a code for Altina's suit from Sin 2. And then as you saw, as you saw on the front right here, I'm loving, I am loving these stamps. I don't know if it'll actually focus. Let's see if I can get it to. That is actually super cool. And then let the That is absolutely really cool. That's a really cool touch. <laughs> I did censor the code, yes. All right, let me switch back over to that so I can put the camera on autofocus so maybe it'll cooperate. So there we go. Um, so obviously there's the game. Let me make, let me see how the, have I, I don't know if any of you have ever imported a game, but Japanese packaging is so much nicer than <laughs> our packaging here. <laughs> Ta-da, it's open like that. That is like super convenient. So we have the game in the instruction manual. And the characters. And all how to play. And there you go. And uh, as always, Falcom is posting that they're recruiting on the back page of the manual. They're always hiring. Always. So... And then, from what I remember seeing of it, you take this... Oh my god, these are gorgeous. <laughs> that red, though! Holy shit. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna have to put the box out of the way for a moment. Oh, Falcom's always got great manuals with their games. These are the three books. The three scripts, yes. Let me put this out of the way real quick. Setting it next to my... Setting it next to the PS4, PS3 over there. These are... So I can't really describe it. It looks like one of them's got a ding on it, but that's okay. So... Um, this is what the cover is for. So basically, I'll have to put this back in its sleeve when I'm done. Is this is a cover for the books here. Oh, cool. We'll punch out. Oh, that's a book cover. Or that's a, uh, those are bookmarks. Alright. That is super cool. So these are, it's not the entire game text fan. These are the original synopsis books. No fan, they're not. Hang on, let me put this back in its case.
What you're thinking of, fan? Hang on. That's what you're thinking of. Right here. Oh, that's a shame. Well, let's see what we have here. I'm gonna shift the mic. Oh, by the way, there's stuff on the back. Holy shit. Oh, dude, that's cool. There's a lot of descriptive text in sections here, too. <laughs> Elise is a lizard shapeshifter. The sketch of Nord. I remember seeing early sketches of Nord at somewhere, somewhere in something. This is cool because this is very different from your typical script. This is actually a It's grumbly at all the attention that Lisa gets. <laughs> all right. So, I will need to look in this in a little more detail at some point. I don't want to delve into them too much for obvious reasons. But I do know they have these. Some sketches in the back. It's crazy seeing how much smaller the Sin 2 one is to Sin 1. And then, of course, the monster that's Sin 3 <laughs> is almost as big as the other two combined. I've noticed my... It's up and down. So you start here, and you read down like this. And then you come down here, and you keep reading. And then you come up here, and you keep reading this way. Yeah, there is a lot of interesting commentary between the lines here, like right here. Reading down, how barbaric. <laughs> Do we have more sketches in the back here? No, we don't. Well, if it's that way, I'm actually not so, not so terribly worried about the contents of oh wow look at this this is actually talking about each of the locations that's cool it's talking about terms and names and stuff talk they have the emblems of the of seven uh, seven divisions of the military. What the? This is kind of neat. 
This is a breakdown of the students as if there was no class seven. This is how the students would have been arranged, the class seven would have been arranged if there was no class seven. So class one, uh, Yusus and Lara would have been in it. Reen would have been in class two. Class three would have had Elisa, Machias, and Elliot. Four, or three would have had them. Four would have had Emma, Crow, and Gaius. And then five would have had Fee and Milliam. <clears throat> You're right. You're right, Satan. There's a lot of wiki material in this. These are not quite what I thought they would be. But they're pretty spectacular as well. Let's see. Let's see if the first one has stuff like this at the end. Nope, first one ends right on the ending. Because you can see the stuff right here. So. <laughs> and then... see what we have at the end here oh wow I love this sketch <gasps> oh my god let me see if I can take control of focus so I can sh make this look better that sketch is amazing Let's, uh... <laughs> Looks like Reen, Schmidt, Michael, and Randy all talking in the background. <laughs> Anything with Toa's in it is the best. So, there we go. And it goes, it, this is a monster book. And this is all scenario text. There, there's no added info at the end. It has the two sketches right here. And this is the end of Sin 3 right here. So, all of this is scenario text for Sin 3. <laughs> oh my god, this is a monster. I think if anything illustrates the size of that game compared to the other two. How many pages? Let's see here. The Sin 3 book is 340 pages. Uh, Sin 2's book is, feels almost like a D&D &D book, 124, Sin 1's is 236, so there you go, those are the three books, let's see if I can turn this up a bit, ta-da! Yeah, these are, these have some really incredible covers. I can't really convey the covers of these books very well. I mean, if you look, you can actually see there's embossing in the cover all over it. Like, there's the, there's the logo embossed into it. I think it might be easier to show it to you on a darker one. Right here. They're really, they're really kind of a soft, they're not, they're not your typical cardstock covers. There's a soft, almost, I can't really describe this feeling. Hey, Sniff, come here. You're better at putting cr odd things into words. Come here. Getting Sniff to come here. I need a good description for how that cover feels. That is a really cool texture on the cover. It almost, what I would almost say is it's cardstock, definitely. He's good at putting odd words in the things. 
<laughs> We're gonna turn down Spotify again, so. Alright. You know what this is? What? This is them fucking envelopes for the fucking Oscars to say and the, and the nominees are. <laughs> Have you ever touched one of those? I'd like to dream someday, Flu. Really? Word. Word. Right, like them, the fucking fancy fucking envelopes for like invitations to laser weddings and shit. There you go. It, it's not card, it is cardstock, but it almost feels kind of like suede in a sense. Velvety. Not velvety. I wouldn't What's call it. velvety? I don't know. But it's like that kind of cardstock that's got a... <laughs> Fan says, sniff dreaming of touching a chocobo. I wish I could convey the look. Hang on. Oh, God. Why are you breaking <laughs> shit? I am totally... breaking shit? There you go. Why there you he is. Shit? <laughs> also, fan, the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> All right, no, we're going to try to yeah, no, put this... Oh, crap. Yeah, oh, crap. Job. Hi. Good job. Totally breaking shit. You're breaking everything. You've broken my heart, and now you've broken your hand. There we go. <laughs> All right. The no Sin 3 one looks like... Sin... <laughs> See here, turn says the, the Sin 3 one looks like a Bible with that color scheme. There you go. <laughs> Stiff just shouted, the power of Jesus. All right, so hang on. Because it's the Kiseki Bible. There we go. Hey, hey. No. What? No. What? No. What did I say wrong? <laughs> Turns to the power of Adios. And Crimson says, Osborne will be our lord and savior. And Mr. J fired off the the fuck is wrong with your command. Oh, shit. That's because this... I'm having trouble putting these all in in the right order. There we go. All right. So there you go. The difference between the collector's edition and eternal edition. The eternal edition is the collector's edition. There was never any other version other than it. It's just the official name for the collector's edition. So. There you go. And that is it. That is. That is the box. How much did this run me? This is. <laughs> this is going to be a. A funny thing. Let me. Let me tell you the story. With and without shipping. <laughs> so. I wanted the book cover, I went through Falcom. Uh, Falcom only ships via EMS, is your first warning. So, let me see here. What's the price on Falcom's site real quick? Oh, that's why. The box got dinged somewhere. That's why my book was damaged right there. Let's see here. That's sad. I blame, I blame the post. The post office. Anyway, so the Eternal Box runs at 11,800 yen. That's a... Uh, that is... Probably about $110 or so. And then... <laughs> shipping from Falcom. Like I said, EMS is always really expensive. Yeah, about... Uh, it's actually closer to 110 than 120 um, but shipping from Falcom is always expensive because EMS charges, uh, starts at like a high amount then goes per gram. So my shipping cost was probably about 60 to $70. <laughs> so it, it's not a light box. This is actually a relatively hefty box because of the three books in it. I mean, you hear that thump when I put it down. <laughs> so this is a pretty pretty hefty box it was an expensive purchase if you go through somewhere like amazon it would have been a lot cheaper on the other hand i like to go through falcom directly because that means 100 percent of that money except the shipping goes straight into their pocket so that's something that i actually appreciate a lot <laughs> though the box itself is pretty pretty hefty cardboard that's that 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 took quite a hit to actually get that ding on it so, but there we go. It is. That's it. It is what it is. So, that will probably go up on my shelf while I continue playing the game digitally. 
So, ta-da! And with that said, I think what I'm going to need to do is drop into a standby because I will need to move my webcam. I'll need to switch my monitor setup and get my keyboard in place, get the PS4 going. So, let me go into standby for about 5 to 10 minutes. Yeah, yours comes with the pocket watch. Yours is the, uh... Dengeki set, which I didn't get. I didn't get the pocket watch because it looked like... Let me show you a pocket watch I've had for years. <laughs> Sniff just sat, shouted to hold my beer. So I've had this pocket watch for probably about 15 years. Not a problem, Lang. Thank you for coming into the chat. This is a old mechanical pocket watch that I've had. I think actually looks so much better than the one that they're doing with the with the Dengeki set. Let me pull out the There it is. In the back. I'm a sucker for mechanical watches. Probably for the best that I ended up <laughs> working for a watch company. <laughs> So, I do too. And since the gear movements of our standard watch don't normally... I know, isn't that gorgeous? Since the gear movements of a standard watch don't match up to what should be in an Orbment watch. Um, or in that Orbment pocket watch, they actually looks like... It looks like a printed face made to mock up the original. Or mock up the art of it, rather than letting you just see the see the actual gears and mechanics like a skeleton watch. Anything, <laughs> I don't have a back cover on it, sadly. <laughs> it, it's just this. I don't have the chain, the fob or the chain anymore. I just have this as it is. But I've had this for ages, and since it's mechanical, it's like an actual wind-up. There it is. It's wound up completely now. So. And that's it. I love this. I've had... I. So I was in a cosplay for Chrono Crusade ages ago, and we used we were planning to use this to make the base of Rosette Christopher's watch, clock necklace. And then we eventually just didn't want to uh, touch it up at all, so we just put it on a chain and I wore it anyway as it was. So there you go. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and move the stream over to its... Uh, to a standby screen. As my... My... Webcam starts to fall off. It's little... I don't think people realize what I've done here. Let me show you guys. This is hilarious. <laughs> because my, my webcam on its tripod is too... Is not... Is not tall enough. So I had to put it on stuff to make it tall enough to show the box. So I am amazing. <laughs> so that's it. Also, it's my desk in all of its messy glory. So, ta-da. Anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the standby screen. Put my webcam where it belongs. <laughs> Put that thing back where it comes from or so help me. Put it in. <laughs> and Sniff shouted, put it in. <laughs> Firehawk says, so ghetto it would be at home in Sniff's neighborhood. Or Sniff's old neighborhood. I've noticed the silence from Sniff. Is he wrong? <laughs> Sniff just says, gee, like the silence. Anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and drop into the startup screen. We're going to go ahead and go to standby because I need about five to ten minutes to actually get ready and get everything back in the place and switch my monitors around. And I will be good to go. So I will be back with you guys shortly. <laughs> 